with Talk Story TV, and I have with me this morning author Diane Collins. She's written a book called Do You Quantum Think? New Thinking That Will Rock Your World, and it's a, a an award winner, and I will let Diane tell you more about it. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you, Julia. It's great to be with you and everyone. What is my book about? That's the big question, right? Well, everyone knows that we're in a time of rapid, rampant change where many of our systems and structures that we're used to living in, in our world, in our world that we share, and also for ourselves personally, individually, are starting to want to revise themselves, let's put it that way, restructure themselves. And so as Albert Einstein famously said, that I call a modern day mantra, the problems we have cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created them. So the question becomes, well, how do we think in a new way? We know we have to think in new ways. We have to, uh, well, I like to think of it as becoming masterful in the way that we conduct our lives. And a lot of people have talk about you create your reality as you think so you become. And people who are not specifically into that realm of studying the science of mind and all of that, they may think of that as kind of hogwash. So we have this kind of mix mixture of realities that we're all dealing in. And so it came to me as I was growing up that even though people aspire to live the highest, we want to live the highest virtues, we have so much wisdom available, we have so much knowledge available to us now at literally the touch of a smartphone, that there was still a gap some kind of discrepancy or disconnect between what we know to do, Julia, and what we're actually doing. Sometimes we're not exactly, you know, we don't even realize that though we may think of something like judge not lest you be judged, you know, one of the great, of course, wisdom teachers of all time uh, attributed to Jesus, for example, that we still find ourselves judging. So we find ourselves in habits of thinking that I discovered was a result of the prevailing set of assumptions and ideas that we can very simply call our worldview. So in short, we're in a quantum age we have a little bit of knowledge about subtle energy fields, about how the mind works, about how mind to mind and mind to matter connections, a little knowledge. We all, you know, feeling a great yearning for spiritual connection in a bigger way. People go around saying, oh, I'm spiritual. Are you spiritual? And so we have this smattering of knowledge and information. And again, it's a question of how does our thinking fit into this, both in a very practical daily life way. How do we manage ourselves in our relationships? How do we assure that we have quality relationships? 
How do we achieve mastery in what we want to accomplish in life? How do we move now that we're all evaluating in this great time of change? It will bring uh, us to really look, reflect, pause for a minute and say, what do I really want? Can, how can I live that passion that I've always felt for a new profession, for a place to live in the world, a different place, for whatever it is, a change that you want to make? How do I want to relate to myself now? Kind of like a new identity going forward. So the question, Julia, becomes, how do we accomplish it? How do we go from knowing what to do, having a great deal of wisdom and information, having all the how-to steps, mm -hmm. and actually making the leap, making that integration, embodying these principles, this wisdom, taking those actions that we know will enable us to live a masterful life. So. Do you quantum think, new thinking that will rock your world is really a, encompasses two parts. Part one, wake up. Why should we quantum think? So I'm saying we're in a quantum age yet. Our habits of thinking are still very much what I lovingly call according to an old world view of the way things work. An old world view meaning in, from the 17th century science where they said only physical matter is real. So when you map this onto thinking, quantum thinking in my book is not about science. It's about how these discoveries and ideas shape the way we think. And because our habits of thinking do in fact give rise to our habits of action, to our habits of speaking, even to the way we listen to others, Julia. Then, and therefore, our habits of thinking give rise to all of our results, starting from our experience of ourselves, we could say our internal state, to our relational results, what happens in our field of awareness and our connectivity with others, and to our other kinds of, you know, what I call houses, money, and cars, those outer results. All of that is a function of our habits of thinking. So what I discovered is that like everything in this universe, thinking itself takes place as a system based on these principles, ideas, beliefs, assumptions. And that if we want to catch up, if we want to be able to master literally generating what we want in life, creating our reality, being confident and in command of the way we want our own lives and our world that we share to go, then we need to really know what are the principles of creating that we've been endowed with by virtue of our birthright. And so part one, wake up, why should we quantum think? And I've been talking a little bit about that, it goes more into detail and I tried to make it entertaining <laughs> as I like entertainment. So we want to make, you know, let's and not get too heavy boy. and significant about this. Let's have some fun with it. And part two, you can quantum think. Here are the 21 principles and practices that I call distinctions in new thinking that put this all together, that makes sense of the changes surrounding us, that enable us to live more effectively with the accelerating pace of change, with our increasing complexity and number of choices that we have because of our amazing technology that enables you and I, to, you and me to speak this way. And this unfathomable uncertainty that we witness every day in the world. How do we catch up with that? Well, according to the old world, which is called linear step-by-step -step approach, you can't really catch up. And that's where the quantum leap in consciousness comes. The quantum leap. You go 
to this expanded way of thinking. You learn these principles and this enables you to start to live from the more accurate and up-to-date knowledge that we have today as a result of these quantum discoveries. Wow. <laughs> so that was a long, yeah. that was a long okay. answer. And, uh, you know, I know, like, I know I should meditate to relieve stress, but if you haven't been practicing meditation, it doesn't help when you're in a stressful situation. Well, this is a very good point you're making, Julia, because when you realize, and the big shift is going, you know, what is the big shift, you know, this paradigm shift or the new model, you know, how has our scientific knowledge been updated? Is that we went from that very limited point of view of only physical matter is real. And if you apply this, you map this on to human thinking. Well, you could translate matter equals circumstances, right? So we try to manipulate ourselves around the circumstances. So you have an experience of stress, and then you try to fix the stress, right? Alleviate the stress, get rid of it. And I'll, I'll get to meditation in a moment because that is important. But you, we try to, like, you know, do less, cut things out of our life. Uh, you know, we try to manipulate ourselves around the circumstances to have something happen. So what you're bringing up about meditation, so the shift, getting back, the paradigm shift has been from a matter-based, a physical-based world, reality, to mm -hmm. a mind-based. What did we find out? The scientists said, oh, the universe is more like a giant mind. We're constantly living in a reality of intelligence, of energy and flux. Every, everything is constantly mm -hmm. moving and shifting. This is the nature of what we're, what we're dealing in. And it's informed by information, intelligence. And guess what? We are the connecting points. So when you start to realize, oh, what we hold in mind, what we hold in our awareness is actually giving us our experience of life, a thought that we have, a meaning we give our, that thought. And so now it comes to, well, what do we really need to learn? We need to learn the faculties of mind. And I distinguish five natural faculties of mind meditation being one. So if you think about what are the faculties of mind, not the psychology of mind, not the ability to analyze, not how the brain works, the brain of course is <laughs> urgently important, but I'm talking about these faculties of mind, of consciousness. And if you think about what you just said about stress, what if you could live in a state of meditation? Now, part of the shift from the old world view to the new world, quantum world view, the old one being called classical mechanical, it gave rise to machines. Now we're in these, you know, quantum effects. What does that mean? Whole system effects. You have a shift in your state and everything around you shifts with it. This is a quantum effect. So one of the characteristics is going from an either or world to a both and world. What does that mean? Well, what if, if meditation is not just a practice, and it is, you know, many forms of meditation practices, all of them great and important. What if meditation is a state of mind. What happens when you meditate is that you connect to that state of being centered, of being focused, of being free of automatic conditioning, automatic mm -hmm. reactions that according to my premise in quantum thinking is a result of that old world machine-like conditioning. 
that we're now at a point in our advancement of humanity as human beings in, in ordinary daily life that we can now go beyond our automatic conditioning. And what if you could simultaneously, in a both-end way, live in a meditative state, even in the midst of chaos, of all the complexity of life, of all the things that are pulling at us in life, right? Or, mm -hmm. you know, ha some happily, some <laughs> that we have to deal with, circumstances that come our way. So this is what's possible. This is the intent of quantum thinking, is that you start to learn these faculties of mind. In fact, you begin to master them. So when you begin to master the, even the idea of meditation as a natural state, as a faculty of mind, then life becomes easier, Julia, and it becomes more joyful. And we do begin to get a greater command, greater mastery with our relationship to whatever circumstances come our way. We may not, and this is where I think a lot of people, you know, they hear, oh, thought creates reality, you create your reality, you know, that's, who knows, that's a bunch of, you know, la la land. It's not that we're, you know, creating the moon uh, or creating some, you know, and this is an area of debate that we won't get into in this conversation, <laughs> but it is that in every moment, we have the capability and the opportunity to create how we're related to these circumstances. And this has to do with learning these faculties of mind and the real way that we, as the connecting point shaping our reality, that we can learn these, this way of thinking, which actually takes you beyond thinking, and for sure, it takes you beyond the automatic limiting responses and reactions that we have to life. What exactly do you mean by faculties of mind? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. And I want to, for the purpose of this conversation, I want to uh, just relate to, I'll tell you what I distinguish, you know, it's an infinite possibility universe, you could distinguish any number, but I distinguish five faculties of mind, and I want to focus in on one, because it really helps to see how thinking from a new system, literally taking that leap, can be very easy and, um, and, I just open up a whole new world of possibility for us. So the five faculties of mind, what I mean by a faculty is a natural capability. So we naturally have the capability to live in that state of meditation, which is a state of inner restfulness. Would you agree mm -hmm. that yes. that's? in some way describes what a medit some people say it's, you know, going, you know, ceasing all thought. There are many types of meditation. There's active meditation. But imagine that you can live in that restful state because in that state, which we could also call a mastery state, is where we are the most effective. You know, if you watch, I'm a, a great tennis fan <laughs> and a tennis player. And when you watch any sport, that sport I'm the most familiar with, that you can have a group of professionals and they are so highly talented in their skills, in having a lifetime of practice and learning and experience. But in the moment, Julia, what really can make the difference between winning that championship or not is your state. 
is your state of mind. And when you are in what we call a lot of times the zone in sports <laughs> language, this is the state that we're in. So what I'm saying in, you know, in essence, in Do You Quantum Thing, is that we can learn to generate that state rather than get lucky one day that, you know, we had a good day and it came about and I was in the zone. What if we could live in that state, regardless of whatever circumstances are coming our way? So oh, the nice. faculties of mind are these natural faculties. One of the faculties of mind, and it's really the di these different, I'll say it in terms of the dynamics, is we have the, dyna the, the faculty that I call observation. This is the one I wanted to uh, focus on. And in science, it's called the observer effect. What does it mean? Observation doesn't mean just what you see with your visual eyes, mm -hmm. eyesight. It means what we hold in our awareness. So we have the capability to lock in kind of on, you know, reality coordinates, if you want. It's something like the Internet, if you take it as the perfect metaphor, is that the, infinite is, the Internet is like infinite mind. The good, the bad, the ugly, and, <laughs> and the divine, right? <laughs> so what, how do you know? It's infinite. What are we going to click in on? Well, wherever we click, that becomes our reality in the moment. And so we have this power to focus in on a reality. This is called the power of observation, and what the, the dynamic of it is the power of intent. Our intent is the activation of the field of energy and intelligence that brings about circumstances, results consistent with it. So we can either, I like to say it very simply, Something in life, because everything is energy in flux, always moving, shifting, and changing, something is always getting created. The question is, is it getting created consciously with the awareness that we're generating it, or is it just getting created by default, by, you know, you go into a computer, and what are the settings? It'll default to the original settings until you make you become the intervention. You become the intervening factor. So this is, it's pretty easy because when you start to think in this way as a system, and I'll get more to the faculties of mind, you're, it's not like you're monitoring every thought, you know, consider the agony of that, not to mention the impossibility of it. But what you are noticing is that when you're having an experience that is not serving you or others or an approach or a situation that you are involved with or committed to, that you know that you can shift what you hold in your awareness by, create, by noticing it, interrupting it, realizing it, it's not the absolute truth, a very important principle in quantum uh, perspective, is that this is, this is where the observer effect in science comes from, is that what they notice is that the instrument of observation was always having an effect on what was being observed, and therefore they could, the conclusion was there is no objective reality out there somewhere, you know, waiting to be defined by the superhuman who can figure it all out. It means that we are always in relationship to what we hold in awareness, to the people that we're sitting across the dinner table with, to the people who we're in a meeting with in the boardroom, to the people who we're watching on TV our politicians, the people who are running the government, is that how they show up for us, how life occurs and how we experience life is according to the instrument of observation for human beings, which is our very own awareness and the power of intent. So that is the key faculty, is our, uh, our observation. 
the power of intent and how important this is, Julia, to use this consciously. Some of the other, the other faculties, the power of intuition. Now we think of intuition as a very common word, right? We all think we, we have it, we use it, some people have it more than others, but this is one of the natural faculties of mind, just as the faculty of intent is one of the natural faculties of mind, the faculty of intuition. Now this in today's world becomes vitally important. Why? Because of what I was talking about. Everything is speeding up. That's actually a scientific fact. We don't need scientists to tell us because we have an experience. Wow, the whole year just went by. And we have in our experience this accelerated pace of change. We have also this increase in complexity, so many choices. So when you think about, well, how do I make a decision? What is the means by which I can make prudent, wise, masterful decisions? Is that now we want to integrate all this. Yes, we need to know the facts. We need to know which the facts also, by the way, are changing. <laughs> the facts change all the time. So how do we know? You know, it's going back to that internet. Sometimes you just know intuitively. So it's a combination of ordinary logic and analysis, which comes from our old worldview conditioning. We're very good at that. And combining that, we're not trading it in, combining it with a conscious use of our intuitive faculty because instead of it just having you know showing up oh i was thinking of my friend from 20 years ago and she called me right in that moment you know this is the most common thing we hear people say or when you're in traffic i use it very ordinary ways you know like which route should i take or when you have to make a decision your intuitive faculty, which because of its connection to what is known in quantum language as non-local mind, to the feet, what is non-local mind? That our mind doesn't end at the edge of our brain or our head or our body, that we're connected to a field. It's invisible. This is why, because of our old worldview conditioning, because they said only physical matter is what we need to concentrate on, only matter matters, that we don't learn in a traditional education, not yet, about these faculties which are natural to us. These faculties of intent, how to use it, the faculty of intuition, how to, how to, be, how to be more adept with it. So when you realize that we are connected to this non-local, it means, what does it mean? It's not located. It doesn't have a, you know, a, like an ordinary object in space-time. It's the mind doesn't have <clears throat> that kind of location. So they call it non-local. And it's not located right here. Our mind can connect to intelligence at a distance. In scientific experimentation, this is called remote viewing. But we have this faculty. And when we start to distinguish this in our awareness and start to take these faculties of mind in a more serious way, this is when we can begin to master our lives in a, whoops, sorry about this, we forgot to turn off. Wait one second, I'm coming right back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to, uh, we forgot uh, to unplug that thumb. So what happens is when we begin to use our intuition, our intuitive faculty of mind as a way of life, as something that we can tune into, knowing that 
we can connect to information, to intelligence at a distance. It's not all lined up, you know, step by step, facts in front of you before you can make a decision. These are things that we can relate to, we can feel it. So you start to see, Julia, how this all be becomes a system of thinking, a way of thinking that's not just the cognitive logic. It includes that, but it's also these other faculties. Another faculty, I'll go through them because I, I know I think yeah. we're probably this, this running video, out of time on to go through all these. Uh, I think that um, we'll have to refer people to your book. Okay. Because um, that sounds like you could do a series of videos on this to really. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that the. The important point, and I do want to, of course, invite everyone to check out my book. And, you know, you can connect with me on my website, which is diannecollins.com. And Diane is with two N's, D-I-A-N-N-E-C-O-L-L-I-N-S.com. And uh, you'll see my book there. My book is Do You Quantum Think? New Thinking That Will Rock Your World. It contains all the principles. It puts this all together. It explains it in a way that will make you laugh <laughs> and realize that the whatever limit, limited habit of thinking we have is really has been a cultural, not personal, and that we now have the opportunity to take this literal leap in consciousness. I was going to say that the book is available wherever fine books are sold, as my publisher would say. You can get it on the Internet, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles. You can order it if it's not in your local store. And really invite you to the intent of it is to connect to your own awareness. I'm not saying something that you don't already know at some level of yourself. Uh -huh. What I am doing is I'm distinguishing it in such a way, bringing it into our awareness so that you can connect to it and you can get a new relationship with a more expanded and up-to-date worldview and way of thinking. And it's all for the one purpose, to enjoy life. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. And um, also, anyone who's watching this, you can read Diane's um, guest blog at tvbackstory.com. And we'll have a link to her website there as well. So I invite you to do that. And thanks so much for being with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for hosting this show and for all the work that you're putting out into the world, Julia. Wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you.